the liver has been a real problem for us with fasters. Right. And so much of it is that people have fatty liver or they have congested common bile ducts or they have gallbladders removed and they have no idea that when they start to fast that that can be a block. I call it a metabolic blocker where sure. it's, it's you know, the liver is the primary fat burning organ. So mm -hmm. if you can't make that switch when you're fasting over to the fat burning system because the liver is sluggish, ketogenic diet, fasting, all of that becomes very difficult. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Minnie in the house. All right. <laughs> I appreciate that. The carnivore diet. Because of what we eat. Honestly, you've really touched my heart. Let me just start off by welcoming you to the Resetter podcast. We're just so happy to pick your brilliant brain. So thank you for being here, Gavin. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you. And I, you know, this is my thing on oils. I, I'm really a transparent person. And the first time that I heard about oils, I'm not going to lie. I was like, mm, rub <laughs> something on my bottom of my feet, <laughs> on my forehead, and then all my problems are going to go away. So I honestly was really dubious. And as sure. oils gained more traction, I turned to a friend of mine and I said, hey, why don't you go learn about it? Come back, <laughs> tell me what you, because I just didn't, I couldn't wrap my head around it. But then I started healing, hearing incredible healing stories like you, like you have an incredible oil healing story and you can't deny the fact that it is working really well for some people. So can we just start off with your healing story? Cause I think it's so inspiring when somebody transforms their health using these oils. You bet, let's get into that. And, and again, thank you for even asking that question. We, we, we all remember that crash of 2007, 2008, we were recovering from that. And I was raised in a home that was consistent with the predominant you know, view of medicine and Western medicine, right? And my wife and I, I am a dad of girls, all girls. Congrats. Thank you. It's pretty, <laughs> uh, I am going to use this word. It's pretty rad. I'm not going to lie. It's yeah. absolutely wonderful. I love it. So four girls and a girl dog, we didn't even want to deviate in reference to, to uh, <laughs> our, our four-legged friends, right? Let's just stay consistent. And at the time we had two littles in 2009, I went to the doctor and he said, hey, Gab, you got a lot of challenges with your gallbladder. Let's, let's remove that. Okay, I guess that's that's the path to take. And so a great friend of mine, the surgeon, and went into that surgery, came out, and he said, Gav, the surgery in reference to the gallbladder was a success. The challenge was I decided to take a liver biopsy while you were under anesthesia because I could tell you've got some real challenges with your bile ducts, and I'm concerned that you may need a transplant. Wow. And I was coming out of anesthesia still a little bit. I'm like, what? And he said, I'm going to send you to a specialist. And we went to the specialist and he said, yeah, you are experiencing a rare autoimmune disease called primary sclerosing cholangitis, which is specific to scarring of the bile ducts for those that don't know. And when your bile ducts scar off and they can't drain bile, then the liver ends up dying. And so when we met with him, I said, okay, well, what do we do? And he said, there's nothing we do. We just treat the symptoms as they come up and try and monitor you. And I said, wait, back the truck up. So you're telling me, he then, right before that, I guess he told me, hey, you're going to die in one to 10 years if you don't have a transplant. Wow. And that's when I asked the question, okay, well, what do we do? And right. He said, right. It's like, there's got to be something. Right. And he said, no, nah, we just treat the symptoms. And so I said, so there's absolutely nothing. He said, yeah, you actually are young enough. I was 29. At the time, he said, you may need two transplants and there's only a 50% success rate with them. So I was like, hmm, well, that's below average. Uh, let's continue, yeah. you know, moving forward with our life. And two months later, I ended up back at the doctor because I was losing weight. I had major pain, wasn't able to eat. And they said, hey, your common bile duct, which is like the trunk of the Y of the bile duct, was closing off. And so... They said, hey, we're going to need to put a stent in. They put one stent in and it did not work. They put a second stent in. And that between that time, between this, the entry of the second stent and the next doctor appointment, I was introduced to geranium. Now, this isn't the geranium we're used to smelling, right? This is an Egyptian right. geranium. Uh, okay. And it is very specific to, it can be specific as a tonic for the body. 
also has the capacity, anti-inflammatory capacity. It's really good for skin and tissue as a whole, right? And I was introduced to frankincense. And so I started to use one drop of geranium topically over my liver. And I began to utilize an aspect of frankincense as well. I did that very, very slowly because I was in a very, very difficult state. And I think something your, your audience needs to know is essential oils are so concentrated, right? Hmm. We don't play with them in the sense of we don't just think if one drop does well, how about six? Oh, you mean, so when I lathered it on me before this <laughs> podcast, that could be a problem? Ah, I'm not suggesting. <laughs> yes, I am suggesting that, I, right? And I, I come from the school, if a little bit is good, a lot more is better. I'm so glad I'm here today. What an absolute <laughs> opportunity, right? And so it's not that it couldn't be great for you, um, but if someone is in a a chronic, very difficult state like the liver, right? We don't, I get this question all the time. Don't we have two livers? No, friends, we have one. We have two kidneys, right? But we only have one liver and our liver cleanses the blood. So we want to be very careful with it. So one drop, did that for a week and a half and then thought I'm feeling improvement. I'm not as jaundiced Fascinating. and I'm not experiencing as much discomfort. Let's increase this. Again, I only, I did one drop in the morning, one drop at night. I mean, and did it, you, which, did you drink, did you drink it or did you rub it over your liver? So geranium was topical. And then I did a drop of frankincense internally in the morning and a drop at night with frankincense, but geranium, I kept it topical. Um, I don't like the taste of it. I'm just going to yeah. do it. Right. Yeah. And, but at the same time, I didn't want it to, because geranium in reality, from a science standpoint is much more of a purging oil than a frankincense would be. Mm. And so frankincense is more of what we would consider, some call them a universal oil, one that's helpful for so many different systems of the body. And frankincense, what a fantastic oil. Mm. I believe the heavy hitter in this experience as I've continued to research and grow in essential oils was geranium. And so I started using more. And a month and a half later, I'm back in the, the doctor's office after a procedure called an ERCP. And the doc comes out and says, gap, this stent's no longer in your body. All your levels are normal. I don't want to see you for six months. Crazy. I was like, wait, first of all, where's the stent? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, so I, was like, I was like, what? It doesn't that's just disappear. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought. I was like, where did the stent go? That was my first question. He goes, well, you just passed it. And I'm like, I passed it like on like a highway. And he goes, no, you pooped it out. I'm like, oh, thanks for the clarification. Because it's a stent that's like the inside of a pen, right? It's not like mm -hmm. a stent that we would put in a heart. So they're actually temporary stents that they hold in there for eight weeks and then they have to remove them. And so I then said, okay, well, what do we do? He's like, go home. I'm like, wow, I love this. And I'm wanting to cry and laugh at the same time, but I'm just going to go home now. Right. And enjoy this. Crazy. And, but from that point on, that's what started the journey. Right. So a lot of people think, Hey, that's why you're doing necessarily what you're doing. And I'm doing it because that was the beginning of my journey. It hasn't been the whole journey, but right. it makes you go, wait a minute. It, it even, this is even my brain. I, like I hear you, I believe you. And I'm going to say, I'm like one drop you put, you know, this is the thing about oils that I, I'm really baffled on. And mm -hmm. like, even if we just take this common bile duct, you know, how many people we detox and fast right. and we end up with a stagnant a liver, a stagnant gallbladder, a stagnant common bile duct. So you just taught me a real hack that we could use with our fasters and our detoxers. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's insane. That's something like an oil. So, so do you understand the mechanism behind why it works now? Like so, what happened? Yeah, you bet. So when you look at one drop, right? Cause I get that question all the time. Can one drop really help? Uh, yes, friends. And the reason why is because you can have anywhere from 50 to 400 chemical constituents in that one drop. Wow. Remember that essential oils are similar to us in the fact that they're made up of a lot of carbon, carbon and water. Right. So they meld very well with us. But when we talk okay. about the actual chemical constituents, um, the chemical constituents that are found within geranium have that anti inflammatory activity. So okay. when it began, because a molecule is small enough, Dr. Mini, from an essential oil standpoint, that you put it on the skin and it goes into the bloodstream. Yeah. It's that small. So when we go 
direct. What I love about topical application is you can get very specific to a body system, very specific to an organ, and that's exactly what happened. I believe that both because geranium can be an anti-stressor as well as frankincense, I think they both work uh, really a well to get exactly as a dynamic yeah. duo to provide that. Yeah. And so the truth is there's a lot of hepatoprotective protective essential oils. A ton what, of them. what if you took like a castor oil pack, you put castor oil on the pack and then you put a couple oils on there and then you put it over your liver at night and you slept with a castor oil pack on, do you think that would just accentuate the opening of that common bile duct for people? It could, it has that capacity. Now I will say, remember what's so cool about what you just asked is the liver, according to traditional Chinese medicine is cleansing between one and three in the morning. Right. It's repairing, right? right? And so that's so key. Uh, what you could do is you could do a geranium. We, I would do a combination, right? So I'm a formulator as well. And when we work with essential oils, a lot of people will work with just, hey, this, this one has this chemical constituent, this one has this one. I'm looking at it from a personality. You're looking to create a team mm. that has personalities that work together mm. because you can actually take some essential oils that you think are just rock stars, right? Yep. And you put them in a blend and they become a C blend. And Interesting. it's just lamo supremo, right? And so what we do is I'm looking more at personalities. I'll look at chemical constituents and then I'll look at, okay, for example, simple example could be like an oregano, a very strong immune supportive oil and many great capacities. Thymol, very great. They're both what we call triple threats, antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal. And oregano, usually when you look at it, just wants to go in and just start just destroying and not necessarily the body, but if you looked at a building that had a threat, it would wipe out the building okay. where time might go in room by room and wipe out the threat, but keep the structure there. Okay. Right. I talked to a lot of people that would say, hey, I use oregano on a daily basis. It's really too caustic for the liver. Time is something that would be more helpful. So going back to your question of would it help by putting this over the liver? It could, I don't think you necessarily need to. Just the oil in and of itself, if you if you use that castor oil as a carrier oil, mm. you can wrap it. I don't think you need to wrap it. Okay. Uh, what I will do at night is I will take our blend Live Better that has a combination of mandarin, rosemary, geranium, helichrysum. Okay, so mandarin is a great, it's an oil that we call, or it basically helps with scarring, right? And mm. so it helps mitigate any type of scarring. And and I'm sure in your field with fasting, and as you look at the liver and detoxification, the rise in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, Ugh. right? The liver has been a real problem for us with fasters. Right. And so much of it is that people have fatty liver or they have congested common bile ducts or they have gallbladders removed and they have no idea that when they start to fast, that that can be a block. I call it a metabolic blocker where sure. it's, it's the, you know, the liver is the primary fat burning organ. So mm -hmm. if you can't make that switch when you're fasting over to the fat burning system, because the liver is sluggish, ketogenic diet, fasting, all of that becomes very difficult. Right. And so we combine something like a Mandarin, what we'd call an anti-proliferative when we're talking about scarring, that's what studies and research show. So please know that whenever we formulate something, it's always research-based. And then I'll take in that experience base of personalities or whatever we want to call that. Second would be a rosemary can be very helpful and supportive of the liver when we're experiencing something like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's more of a stimulant. So okay. you look at essential oils in general as stimulants and calming or relaxants. There are some that do both. Mm -hmm. And some of those are in what we call a, a blend called pure embrace. But yeah, in reference to fasting, rosemary is a stimulant that will help to gently cleanse and really remove. And then you get geranium as the third ingredient. And she, ah, the interesting thing about the liver is it's where we hold anger. I know. Do you know that I actually know this because when I first started fasting, uh -huh. anger like came out of me. Yeah. And now when I fast, I don't ever experience that, but it was like on the second day and it was very illogical. And then if I combine that with a yoga practice that worked on opening up the, the liver channels, it only made the anger worse. Right. So, but now that I've been fasting so much, anger is just not a, a, an emotion I feel anymore. 
So congratulations in reference to removing more of that emotion. Nice work, right? Yeah. So if I had known about oils, maybe I could have gotten it out a little quicker. <laughs> maybe, this is why right? having a skeptical brain doesn't serve you <laughs> because I was, I've was i been walking around for the last decade like, mm, I'm not sure about these oils, but I've now opened my eyes. No, you're totally great. Um, something about geranium, I'll tell you an interesting story. Someone that was struggling with the liver uh, disease, I sent them a blend of essential oils with some geranium and I sent them geranium. And I invited them to put them on the bottom of their feet each night. All right, I said, switch them up, right? Do the blend a few days, do geranium a few days. And because I knew what was going to happen, and it's exactly what happened. He called me after two weeks and I said, how are you doing? Are you consistent? And he said, yeah. He said, but I don't really feel great when I put on geranium. I like the blend better, right? And I said, really? Tell me how you feel. He goes, I just feel on edge, right? Uh, and I said, yeah. Because one of the emotional detoxification capacities of geranium is to help us release anger and forgive. Wow. And so Which that's is good. You got to get right? those emotions out. You do, because you can't yeah. really move to forgiveness until you work through them. Yeah. And Amazing. so that's part of why that's there. And then helichrism is an oil that maybe some have heard of, maybe they haven't. Uh, it is an oil that I use. It is, we could call it is an analgesic. It's a restorative. It's amazing for the nerves. Top three oil for me in reference if I was stuck on an island, right? But it's capacity to also be effective against discomfort in the liver is wonderful. Interesting. And just helping that detoxification piece. So that's why it's there. So there's, there's two hurdles that I've seen with oils in people. And the first is which oil to use, which is why when I first found out about your products, I was like, I went to your website, you sent us some samples. Thank you. I appreciate that. I've been experimenting sure. with them. Sure. But you had these powerful blends and now I understand why. Cause again, I want the shortcut. Like, <laughs> just tell me like, like pure happy. I just lathered it on, like on me, right? like before I got on here and I did the little bit, you know, I should probably put a lot on, keep myself happy, but I assume you've already made the connection and connected all the dots of which oils I don't, I don't really, um, I don't, my passion isn't getting into each individual oil. Sure. Um, and I love that you did that home homework. Sure. The other thing that I love is, and this is a real pet peeve for me, is that in all oils, all vitamins, supplements in general, that we, we go to use these products and we think that they're a health food, but they're packed with toxins. Right. And it's really frustrating. This is one of the reasons I've never gone into the supplement business because I'm like, I don't, you, you got to make sure you're dealing with a pure product. Yep. So can you explain it? And this is what I love about you guys. You've tested for heavy metals. You, you have really pure products. Um, and that puts me at ease when I lather it over my liver. Sure, I want to sure. make sure it's toxic free. So can <laughs> you talk a little bit about the protocols you guys use to keep these clean? You bet. So in reference to our essential oils, the real key is having a fantastic relationship with whom you get your bulk oils from, because it's actually more important that they're buying well, mm. right? That buying process that they're doing the test. So we'll do up to 13 different tests in reference to looking for adulteration, because what you're seeing more and more, even more than like a heavy metal is you're seeing adulteration in the sense of extenders, right? The FDA allows anywhere from five to 10% of that oil to be actual oil, and then it can be additives or extenders and be called 100% pure. It's, okay. it's crazy to me. So when we're working with this, we're looking and choosing oils that are very, that fit us very specific criteria. If they don't fit that criteria, for example, Pure Happy took nine months to make. Wow. And the reason why it took nine months to make wasn't because the formula wasn't ready. It's because I was scouring. We were scouring as a team, the entire world to find a truly pure balsam of Peru essential oil. Interesting. And it took forever. Right. Wow. But so I, I should did... appreciate it even more when I lather it on me. Is that yeah, what you know what? Me? You should appreciate it even more. You're right. I will remember this conversation <laughs> and make sure that I have incredible gratitude to you and your team. Oh, you're fantastic. So that is what we're talking about. We will not 
accept something that is not top tier, right? Because we provide a lot to practitioners. And so that is our goal in being a practitioner's choice, safe for the family, safe for the individual, but really that a practitioner can have confidence in. And when I say different tests, we'll have those tests done when we buy, and then we'll do those tests even after we receive it. For example, uh, we got our a new source of, not source, a new lot of Copaiba, which is our best-selling single. Copaiba I saw has- that. Yeah. What is that? I saw it on your website and I was strangely curious. You're like, what the what? And yeah. uh, <laughs> so it was a tree, it's a tree in Brazil. It's a resin. Okay. So you've heard of CBD, right? Yep. One of the main chemical constituents in CBD is beta caryophylline. Beta caryophylline is the main chemical constituent in Copaiba. They just work very differently in reference to the endocannabinoid system. And so uh, that's another day, but in reference to Copaiba, its capacity to be helpful for discomfort, it beta caryophylline has a great capacity to support brain function, great for the lungs, great for the heart, great for the digestive system, right? But it doesn't have a strong smell. Interesting. And so it's a subtle, very woodsy, resin-like. So if you're talking resins or saps, we're talking frankincense, myrrh, Copaiba, right? These are oils that are what we consider to be resonant. But mm. copaiba is gentle enough for a child, okay. effective enough for an adult or a practitioner. And so- there you And go. does it matter where you put the oil? Because that's the other thing that has confused me. Do I put it in water and drink it? Do I rub it on my third eye? Do I put it on the bottom okay. of my feet? How do I know where to put the oil? Do you jump up and down and twist three times and well, that's I can increase it, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's the other thing. If I want to make sure I amplify its effect for sure. Right. So great question. So depending on how you use them. So topically, you can use them in many different ways. Like I said earlier, you can get very specific to an organ or body system. Let's say I feel a seasonal sickness or something coming on that may be happening right? We could apply those oils to the spine and get direct mm. access to the entire body. And so that's what Does I do. Does it matter I'm, which spinal level? We're going to do the whole thing, right? So I'm going oh, to take all the way a few drops. Yep. Just put some carrier over that spine, mm. carrier like fractionated coconut oil, Okay. Right? something, sunflower, semi, uh, sesame seed. You put a few drops and you, when you put that onto the spine, it can be really, really powerful, right? Wow. If you don't have someone else to help you with that, you can go right on the feet. You can okay. go right here. Up your yeah, your, up neck. your neck on the shoulder. If you're really looking for stress, so pure happy works really well yep. right here. And it can be great right here on your wrists because as you're typing or as you're talking with someone, I talk with my hands, I'm going to smell it. And remember when we smell something, Dr. Mindy, we have to, uh, direct access to the limbic system. So mm -hmm. just smelling an essential oil for 20 seconds can completely change your state. Yeah, it's crazy. Isn't that absolutely yeah. epic? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And I'm I'm mildly fascinated with the hippocampus, the part of the brain that is mood and memory. Yep. And um, you know, I'd been studying that because that's really the the seat of Alzheimer's. I wanted to know what how could we affect those neurons through detoxification and through fasting. And then one day when I was deep in the literature, I saw that that part of the brain you have direct access to it through the olfactory nerve. Exactly. And I was like, what? Okay. How, so that makes perfect sense to me. Then when right. you're smelling it, you're going straight into that part of your, of your brain. Exactly. And think about it. One of the challenges I see more and more with people now is they've shut off feeling. Mm, so true. Right? There's so much stress we're not feeling. And the challenging thing is late 1800s, early 1900s, as we started to see more pharmaceuticals and just different things like that. The scientists, science in general is like, sense of smell doesn't matter. The challenge is the sense of smell is stronger than any sense, mm. actually. And it works. Oils work at a subconscious level because they have a backstage pass to the limbic system. We bypass the cerebral cortex. We, Makes I'm speaking perfect. as we, like right. I'm an oil, right? Yeah. But oils in particular. <laughs> well, you pretty much are. You might as well be. You're the closest thing I know to be able to talk to an oil is I can talk to you. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll, I'll take it. Right. So that is what happens when we get in there. I mean, we hit that limbic system. We're going to the hypothalamus, pineal, pituitary, hippocampus. We're going to go through all of that. So indirectly, at some point, we're affecting every organ just from smell. Uh, I was, I love reading interesting studies in reference to where you see just by smelling something, 
heart rate goes down. I was reading a study with over 60 women who were experiencing menopause. And as they were just inhaling this, it brought down so much of their emotion and allowed them to feel just oh my gosh. in a greater state, right? So fantastic. Have you ever seen that meme where it's like a, a menop and it says something about like, you know, a menopausal woman using her lavender and then she's just like got lavender all over her body. We she's need just the, we need as much of this oil as we possibly can. So if, when I saw that meme, I'm like, that's how I feel sometimes when my hormones got, go off. I'm like, I'm just going to go roll around in some lavender or anything to calm myself down. So no. There's some great truth to that. And let me tell you why the average person doesn't understand why lavender is such a great selling oil. I mean, they know they love it, but the personality of lavender is it gets along with anyone and it's, it's an oil that will sacrifice to help you. It's almost like the mom that is just knows what's happening everywhere is completely involved. But what's cool about lavender is lavender can help if there's a hyper feeling or hyper experience with the parasympathetic and the sympathetic it can adjust and bring down both. So that cool. is the beauty of lavender. Part of the reason that people don't understand why it sells well, they just know I feel really good with lavender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, okay, so you, you have to talk about um, Pure Embrace. I'd love to go into some of the 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 blends that you have. And is, sure. is Pure Embrace is the hormone one, is that yeah. correct? Yeah, the yeah. story behind that is when we created it, I wanted to create a blend that would support the limbic endocrine and also just even the female reproductive system. Beautiful. That was the goal, right? Um, now, when we formulate, again, I formulate and look at personalities and chemical constituents. So the number one chemical constituent or number one oil is clary sage. Clary sage, when you're struggling, is just that friend that meets you at your level, right? They meet you at your level and they can bring you up. But what is it that, why I say that about clary sage now, Clary Sage has been shown, or a lot of different clinical aromatherapists and different groups will talk about in their research, that it is good for estrogen accumulation and can mm. be good for low estrogen. Mm. And so, in one reason is it's actually similar to lavender in its chemical makeup, but not the same, right? This is where we see personalities. We know people that are very similar, but we would prefer to be with that person in one situation, maybe over another. And so, Clary Sage would be is an oil that really helps you get deep and help you work through inadequacies and emotions that really aren't true to who you are. And so, and what, yeah. tell me, so let, again, let's make it applicable. So if I put Clarity Sage in water and I drink it, are emotions gonna come up and then I'm, I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with those emotions or is it more on a subconscious level that it's like helping you, your nervous system process that. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So clary sage, if you were to put it in water, you could do it in water. But remember, if we're going internal and there are only certain oils that we use internal and then okay. certain oils that we prefer and uh, topical or aromatic, clary sage works so well at a topical and even a aromatic level that when you smell it, it is, it's bringing that nervous system down and let's say you're going to go into a situation of great stress. It's going to bring that stress down mm. and help your brain. Think of an essential oil as a communicator. It's a messenger. It sends a message to the body to help it better communicate to achieve greater equilibrium. Because when you look at an essential oil in its most basic form, it's just energy, right? The body helps every single organ, every single aspect of the body has a vibration. Right. And an essential oil helps to bring the vibration where it needs to be to work at full capacity. So yeah. does that help? Does that help as an Yeah, that's very helpful. And we have um, really experienced that vibration part of it with uh, a big, we're a big fan of systemic formulas supplements. Perfect. And one of the things that I, I've seen it work so well because they have matched the vibration of the organ to the nutrients. And I, again, would have said this is completely woo-woo if I had <laughs> not experienced using these supplements on over, you know, a decade and seeing time and time again, they heal. So the vibrational piece, you know, there's so much about that, about oils, about supplements that the medical profession has really dismissed. But when you dive into the science is really, really profound in healing you. So I get that. That speaks to me. Well, it's interesting when we created Pure Embrace, uh, I sent it to someone to have it 
measure and see if it was helpful in the vibration of those three systems. I literally said, hey, friend, I want you to see exactly what it does with these systems. And she called me back. She says, balanced them like boom. And so I was like, sweet as she used that system. Now, again, every body is a little different. So when you make a blend, you you're making it to do your very best for the masses. Can you always get it really specific? Not all the time, but that's why we create things like live better is very specific to liver function and detoxification pure embrace. I wanted it to touch upon three Uh, at least those three systems, because you can make a formulation that tries to do too much and then it doesn't become great at either. Yeah. And so that's part of that. Go ahead. Yeah, no. So now my brain's turning um, with pure embrace. So one thing we know about the menstrual cycle is that you've got estrogen coming in strong in the front half of the cycle and you've got progesterone coming in strong in the back half. And so we time food and fast according to these, the ebbs and flows of estrogen, progesterone, and then testosterone comes in really strong at, at ovulation. Sure. Can, and so I've been thinking about how to time supplements according to that. Mm -hmm. Could you time your oils according to that? Or does this oil so good that you would put it on throughout the whole, your whole cycle and it's going to balance all of those hormones. Or if it's, if clarity sage is really about estrogen, low estrogen. I heard you talk about it. It brings estrogen up. So then would I want to use it closer towards ovulation? Can I calculate it like that? You can. So clary sage actually can, can do both right now. Uh, Something like pure and grace, pure embrace or clary sage. We, we wouldn't have someone who was pregnant use them. Okay. Right. Um, because of that capacity, there are some that say that clary sage increases estrogen. I've never seen that in the research and I've looked at some of the researchers of the last 30 years and they've made comments of, we haven't necessarily seen that. Okay. Um, but it's capacity again, can you do that? Yes, pure embrace, could it do that? It has that capacity because when you look at like the second ingredient is bergamot. Bergamot is a citrus that is a cleanser. Yeah. And as a cleanser, it's also gonna uplift mood. So much of what it's going to do is just support the system as a whole. If you want to get super specific on something, you can bring in singles and do that. Mm. So you could say, Hey, Gab, I want to do Clary Sage the third week, right? Mm -hmm. And when I, on the first two weeks, tell me, let me answer this question for me. In the first two weeks of that cycle, what is the mood, is the mood where you're going to want to be out in the world or are you wanting to pull back and be more thought- no, you're yeah, outward. The, the first okay. part of the cycle, as you're making estrogen, estrogen is what allows women to have real mental clarity. Yep. Um, and, you know, we can accomplish anything when estrogen's high. The right. back half is progesterone. And that's where we want to w- withdraw. And we want to we want to get away from everybody. Perfect. So I wanted that out there so we can talk about this. So when you're wanting to be out there and you're wanting to be at your creative state, this is a fantastic time for those citrus oils. Boom. They're getting the mood going. You're, Mm. you're uplifting your mood. You're feeling like part of pure happy is lime. Lime is that oil that you put on me. You're like, I don't need any mental fogginess today. I just need to go. Right. And it keeps you, keeps you going. It's just wonderful. I look at sometimes lime as an athlete, just that really happy athlete just wants to, to be moving. And then there's peppermint. Peppermint is like that coach with the whistle. That's just like getting everybody going. Right. (laughs) And peppermint I love does your that. Your explanations are phenomenal. <laughs> so peppermint is one you could do in during that time. Like I had a woman come in, and it's interesting. I should have thought I should have thought to ask this, but I, I wasn't dialed in. Let's be real. <laughs> she, she's like, I love your pure happy. And then she tried our peppermint. She goes, This is pure happy. And I was <laughs> like, Okay. She's like, I feel like I could go for hours. I was just thinking in my head right now, like first two weeks. Congratulations. Yep. Congratulations. Right. And so it's just, you can absolutely get that dialed in, in reference to your oils and that. Yeah. We can, we you, can talk about that. How old are your girls? I have toddlers and teenagers, which I think should be the title of a new podcast, but <laughs> I have anywhere from three to 15. Okay. And so, so is the, yeah. are you rubbing it on the 15 year old when she gets a little snarky when her hormones <laughs> are all over the place? 
Well, I will. So this is interesting. It's a great question because this beautiful girl is my oldest and has special needs. Mm. And part of the reason that the pioneer blend of Pure Embrace came because she started to cycle and she didn't understand. Mm. And she came to me and my wife and she's like, I don't understand Dad. I just hurt, right? Because she's 15, but she's really about half that age mentally. Yeah. And I looked at her as a dad and I'm like, okay, sister, this is what dads do, right? I'm going to find a way to solve this Let me problem. fix it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I said, I'm going to create this oil for you. And she came to me and I said, how are you doing with the cramping? I'm good, dad. You know, she just kind of leans into me. And, and that's what I was looking for is I wanted something to help her. And then as Carrie, my absolutely stunning wife, we came together and she said, can you create one? It smells just great and can get even deeper and be helpful for the masses because there's female blends on the market, right? Mm -hmm. There's other female blends on the market. Um, but this one, we wanted it to do a bit more. And the other thing I think I want to mention is intention can improve an oil's effectiveness and even decrease it when we talk about mm. energy, right? Okay. So we seek to keep that intention pure when we formulate and when we source oils that we, I think when we grasp the fact that when we look at the earth as our partner and not a mm. servant, mm. that is when we begin to experience a new level of wholeness mm. because we can be healed from something, but not be whole. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And we're so, I mean, the, uh, the more I study the microbiome, the more convinced I am that the biggest, the best way we can improve the health of humanity is to take care of our planet because we are meant to work in conjunction with a healthy environment. And the more we destroy that, the more we are setting ourselves up for a failure in health and maybe possible extinction. Right. So I, uh, yeah, so I love that you were not, you said we're not a servant to that, to it, we are, well, I think of us as a guest here on this planet. Right. Yeah. We're a partnership is, is partnership. what I see. The there earth has already created things to help us thrive and to enjoy being here and be our very best selves. Yeah. And I think that's what oils do really well because you'll have a lot of people, they'll smell an oil and smell is very, it's very individual. Right. Mm. I can create a blend and someone will be like, I don't like the smell of that. And the other one's like, oh my word, I love that. Right. So the early time of formulation, I was like, okay, I'm working to make this what I feel is going to be effective. I have a blend called pure stability. And I was working with after the formulation, a chemist, and he said, Yeah, your pedigree is strong in this. Um, or this is, excuse me, this was in pure embrace. He said, the, the pedigree is really strong in this. And I said, Yeah, I know. And he said, I don't like the smell of pedigree. And I said, I appreciate that, but I love what pedigree does. So yeah. pedigree is that friend sometimes that comes into a group of people and you're like, I'm not so sure about them. But after getting to know them, you're like, oh man, so happy about pedigree. They're here. They let me accomplish <laughs> so much, right? You've had friends like that, right? At first yes, you're you like, have. Yes, I have. I don't think yeah. you're my jam. Yes, you're all day my jam. But what pedigree really is good at is helping us when we're vulnerable. Mm. And it's a strong scent. It comes from the bitter orange tree, but it's actually the aspect, the twigs and aspects of the tree. And then neroli is the flower. Neroli is the second to last ingredient in pure embrace. And when pettit grain and neroli are in something together, you create this safety net and this ability to reach higher. Neroli helps mm. us to reach higher when you're just sideswiped emotionally. Neroli helps you to come back to center, mm. and be who you need to be. And I think that's one of the reasons I put it in pure embrace is I saw peri and postmenopausal women just going, I don't think they feel themselves right now. No, we don't. Right. <laughs> My wife is fair enough. My wife's 44. Right. And so I'm not going to pretend like I have an experience of what a cycle is. Some people, some women can be listening right now and going, who the heck is this guy? Right. Yeah, and right. so that's why I consult. We consulted so many women on this because I just said, tell me more of what it does. And when we sent it out for testing with different individuals in the nation, one of them called and said, Gap, yeah, this can't be something for cycling because it helps you keep the mood on a daily basis, mm. right? And so that's when it became pure embrace because I felt as I watched my daughter and my wife, those are the times you just, I just need to yeah. know I'm okay and let's move through. But right. No, I think that could be tremendously helpful. And, you know, one of my cries about menopause is that, 
the menopausal woman doesn't understand what she's going through. I mean, I've spent uh, my, all my forties trying to figure out what the heck was happening to me. Sure. And, uh, and yet, and so if she doesn't understand herself, her husband or her partner is not going to understand her. her. Kids aren't going to understand her. Right. So it really is a education so that when those feelings come up, it's very um, natural for us to look around us and go, oh, well, I feel horrible because my husband's not acting a certain way or my kids sure. aren't acting a certain way. But perhaps rubbing some pure embrace on us and then taking a step back and then seeing what we think of our partner and our children could be helpful. Sure, sure. I mean, it, and it could be where power comes, Dr. Mindy, is let's say I've had people come to me before and go, I don't have pure embrace. I'm like, okay, well, what are the oils in pure embrace? Well, there's clary sage. Do you have clary sage? Yeah, go for it, sis. Yeah. Begin with what you have, right? I think the concept here is not necessarily just the blend, but it's just allow the oils to be here. I mean, you're going to find, I'm so excited for you because you're going to find as you're using more citrus, as you're using, I love to go to the trees, right? I go to the trees when I'm experiencing great stress mm. and like balsam fir, Siberian fir, even a copaiba. Mm. And what they do is they just ground me and I just, I'm okay. I'm good mm. to go. I love and so it. every oil is going to have a minimum of two or three things that it does well for the body, for different body systems. I think you should have called pure embrace marriage saver. <laughs> You know, we can't better. have the labels redone now that I think about it. <laughs> Just saying, I, I did see on the website, it said a girlfriend's best friend or something like yeah. that. When I was like, oh, I haven't tried that one, which, <laughs> which leads me to my next question. You know, you could listen, like I'm our, you, you sent me a bunch and I, as soon as we're done, I'm going to go rub some pure embrace on me, but I just put right. some pure happy on me. So can you put sure. too many things at the same time? Can you overdo the oils? That's why I don't have the hair I have, right? And so the <laughs> lack of it. No, no, you can, you can, but that has nothing to do with my hair, right? Um, I've had people ask me all the time, can you make a hair restoring uh, blend? I'm like, yeah, sure, but I like the way I am. The maintenance is absolutely amazing, so That's, no. Yes, envious. <laughs> you can have too much oil. And so okay. you're really, it's going to be different. So for example, my itty bitty Portia, right? She speaks her own language. We call it Portuguese. And as she just kind of does her thing, she's so wonderful. She can't handle as many oils as my five-year-old, mm. right? Okay. So I notice you just, so what I'm suggesting is it's not that you can't use six drops of pure happy. It's when you begin using oils, you need to use very little to see where you're at, mm. right? So you could use a teaspoon of carrier oil and a few drops of oil and then putting on and see how you do. Other companies out there will talk about neat, and neat means no carrier is needed. Mm. At the same time, I don't I don't preach neat unless you're in a situation you don't have a lot of carrier. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's okay too, but you just got to make sure there are oils that, that can be that. And so, yeah, can you use too much? You bet. But okay. you've had it on for the last hour. I feel great. Yeah. So you're okay to, to start with, to awesome. look at, so, to look at gonna, something else. I'm going to leave this podcast interview and go put some pure embrace on me. I, I very excited. It. Very, very cool. Different blends though, right? One's highly floral. Florals get us deep into emotion, right? Okay. Where pure happy is like, let's do this, right? Yes. I, the, when we That's created how I pure feel happy. right now. Perfect. When I created, <laughs> when we created pure happy, I wanted people just to go, Ooh, and the first person I gave it to, she goes, oh, I like that. I went, mission accomplished. It's right? beautiful smelling. That was the goal. And yeah. so not to drink our own Kool-Aid, but just those are what I'm talking about when we say personalities. I want this personality or the personality of the, of the oil to come and say, hey, let's go. Let's do this, yeah. right? So. So, so here's the other thought I have. How can we use these oils for fasting? And we have two major hurdles with fasting. One is hunger. It seems yep. like that would be the most obvious thing mm -hmm. that people, and then the second is how can I bring my blood sugar down? So I'm already thinking about the liver one for when people are fasting to rub on the liver, to help sure. with management of blood sugar. Is, is, do you have another blend that might help fasters with hunger or metabolism? If we go specific to, that's a great question. I've been asked at Gav, can you create one specific to metabolism? And we're mm -hmm. looking at that. And it's not that we can't, we are a company, we run pretty lean. And until the markets ask me mm. a lot, I'm not going to create that. Now you asking that question could be enough for us to do that because I've already in my head, 
like started forming and the joke in our family is if something's out of hand dad will say hey do you want to go smell something right like that's the joke <laughs> to Portia was crying I one day I said Portia let's go let's go smell something and she stopped so in reference to fasting Crazy. grapefruit is one that mm. can okay. be just by smelling it can be helpful in curbing part of the appetite okay right? so that's been proven there's research on that right do you All have grapefruit I do, do. You have Okay. We just a got single a, single blend or is it single a blend? oil? Single, single oil. oil. Okay. Yeah, we just in fact I just got a new wonderful source of that this last week, and it's someone said, "Can I just eat this?" Yeah, you can, but I suggest multiple ways. Yeah. Uh, citrus, citrus, they can be photosensitive, right? So be careful playing out in the sun for a long mm. time after you put some citrus. But yeah, even grapefruit in the system in your water, restorative okay. oils, grapefruit can be great cleansing. It's going to cleanse the liver. It's going to help from a metabolic standpoint because citrus also in general are lymphatics. Mm. They help in stimulating and helping cleanse the lymphatic system. Now let's go back to your question of blood sugars. There are a few different oils that can be helpful for that. Pure Defense is one of our immune blends, but it does multiple things because it has cinnamon in mm. it. Cinnamon yes. can be very helpful. Cinnamon in and of itself can create some levels of allergic reactions for a lot of people because it has a, what we call a lot of cinnamaldehyde and it's very sensitive. There are oils that are very hot to the skin, cinnamon, thyme, clove, oregano, right? Okay. Cassia, which is another type of cinnamon, but cinnamon can be good. Ginger can be good, which is a single oil, right? So these are things that can be very helpful and just great for blood sugars in general. And there's even more. Well, we, we have about a half a million people worldwide. <laughs> do you ship Do you ship to other countries? Because I am curious if we can experiment with this. This is the power of our resetter group is that we're fasting together every month. We take a five-day period and we've experimented with a lot of different things. So I'm curious if we could use grapefruit or one of the blends to see, it might even be you're happy. So you just keep your, you know, you keep your cortisol down throughout <laughs> right? your fast, right. but I, I, you really have me fascinated to experiment with my group with this. So I will say it's interesting, even going back to Clary Sage, I was reading a study just some time ago in reference to, it was a group of different women, about 24 women smelling Clary Sage, increased serotonin and lower mm. cortisol. Right. Mm. Amazing. And so that's what a lot of, when you're talking about an essential oil, they, many of them have that capacity to lower that cortisol mm. level, like pure stability, a, a blend we haven't talked about. Part of the reason why I built that, because just even hearing a notification on your phone increases cortisol. Right. And so yeah. if you can have a moment to just smell and breathe and come down, that's the goal. And that's amazing. So, yeah. And what about kids? I, you have a whole section on kids and um, can you use it on babies? Like how, what, what do we need to know about using these oils on our younger folk? It all comes back to dilution, right? So let's talk okay. about babies and older individuals. And some don't get offended when I say older in reference to age. Yeah. What I'm, all I'm suggesting is, is, is how clean the blood is, right? Mm. So when, when someone's very young, their blood is very clean. They don't need a lot of oil. Okay. When someone's older, they're, let's say, and please know this is just a reference to science, right? 55 years and older, I don't consider 55 old. In fact, I'm 41. So 70, it just keeps going up the older I get. But in reference to science, 50 is the new 20, I'll tell it. you. You nailed it. I'm, so I'm, I'm 51 <laughs> and I am here to declare it's the new 20. Truth. We just dropped it. So I'm an infant. So that's good. Um, <laughs> You're 20. Yeah. So, so how would we dose the oils on you? <laughs> so as we get older, our blood is less clean. So what happens is when you use an oil, your body wants to cleanse and oil wants to cleanse. And so what I'm saying is you'll have more of a moving experience and you're going to go to the bathroom more, mm, right? The, interesting. the older you get, the more you may need to go to the bathroom because it's wanting to cleanse. And so okay. that's one of the challenges. So when we talk about babies, we're talking about very, very little. When we're talking, I'm talking you know, two tables or two drops of oil per a tablespoon of carrier Okay. in that bottle. And so when they get, they're getting majority of that carrier or what we would call a 2% dilution would be per 200 drops of oil or carrier, whatever it is of carrier, then you put four drops of oil. So a 10 mil bottle, which is what we use mostly, uh, you would add basically four drops of 
an oil to that size. Okay. And so, you, so they would, they would drink it. I, could I just put it on there? You wouldn't do it on with a, with a baby. You would not do anything internal. Okay. So it'd be, you know? so what if I have like a, a fussy baby that's not going to sleep? Can I rub like a colic? Yeah. Yeah. Or just maybe they're teething. They're just not sure. sleeping well. Sure. Is there something I can rub on their belly or? You bet. So let's talk about that. Lavender is a great one. Okay. Right. Lavender is yeah. fantastic. Roman chamomile. Mm. Roman cam So Roman chamomile I love is similar to a lavender in its ability to, to bring down the stress and discomfort because lavender is an analgesic. Roman chamomile is an analgesic. But okay. the, the thing here is Roman chamomile just gets even deeper. It's a much more expensive oil. It's harder to get. So think of an essential oil as the lifeblood of the plant. Some plants don't like to give their lifeblood, mm, right? Mm, Whereas a citrus, you can get way more out of the out of the the peel than you're going to get from like it takes thirty roses for one drop of oil. Okay. Right? Wow. And so, Amazing. yeah. So Roman chamomile could go even right here when we're talking about teething because it's going to mm -hmm. go through the tissues. Remember, even that brain that you talked about ten years ago, you're like, you're not going to put this on the skin and have an experience. It's possible because that molecule is going to go through there. Or as you're working here in the gut, we know that's the center of basically everything. You put the lavender or Roman chamomile, they're like our littlest. Her body loves Roman chamomile and loves a combination with red mandarin and Roman chamomile when she's struggling to digest, right? So let's talk about what if you have a stopped up little one? Yeah. That's where you can go a little bit of red mandarin, a little bit of Roman chamomile, and that can help that peristaltic movement begin Amazing. and help that process work. Amazing. Okay. So how do people, you know, if they're listening to this and I'm even fascinated you, now you've taken essential oil knowledge to a whole nother Sweet. depth for me. So I appreciate that. And I can't yeah. wait to go dive into more of the samples that you sent sure. me. Sure. But what if I want to learn more about like which oil does what, can I go to your website or do I start with the blends? How do I get into this? So on the site, restorehopeoils.com, I break down a lot of the blends into, okay, these are the oils that are in it and this is some of what they do. And then I'll break down just a little bit of what the singles do. But what I would do is get on our VIP list, our email list as three times a week, we'll send out like the mm. one of the last ones I sent was, I just went on what was called a high adventure trip with a bunch of young men where they did hiking, um, a 26 mile bike ride and a 10 mile canoeing trick all in a three day period. And they got ticks. Right. Mm -hmm. So I show the story of what, how do we use peppermint and the ticks come right off. Wow. Right. So it's, it's very applicable to, Hey, this is how you can use this in your life. And then just my experience of life. And let's talk about these oils. So one of the emails I talked about taking breathing with a Kung Fu master, what are the oils that can improve breathing? Like you asked the question, can this help the cycle in the month? Yeah. Each one has its capacity for that. So just join the VIP email list it would be a great awesome. way to do that. Awesome. And we will leave the link guys in the, in the show notes. I'm sure it's on your website, but we'll make it even easier and, and leave the link in. So, Perfect. okay. I'm going to finish up with five questions that some okay. of these we ask every, every guest, some of them are unique to you. So, okay. uh, and I think I may know already the answer to the first one, but I'm going to throw it out there anyways. If you could only pick one oil, you said you, if you had to take three oils on an Island with you, if you could only pick one, what would it be? It's like choosing your kids. Like, <laughs> it doesn't like even work choice. in my world, right? It's just, I know. Ugh. Okay, okay. Right. I'll give you three because we want people to have, I, I want people to know what like the top ones are for you. Okay, so for me, that would be a copaiba. That okay. would be either a lavender or a Roman chamomile. That's two. I'm sorry, I'm not sticking to your grounds. And then the third could be like a helichrysum if we're talking singles. So I'm okay. assuming, I don't know if that question is what about, based on Yeah, singles. what about blend? Do you have a favorite blend? Oh yeah, pure stability okay. is one because it just immediately emotionally, if, you're, if someone's struggling, if I'm struggling with just general anxiousness, it's a great one to recenter, mm. right? Not specific to the hormone system, but ridiculous specific, ridic ridiculously specific to cellular health and the emotions. Then I really love forest air because I'm a tree guy. So okay. the first oils in that are a balsam per Siberian per opens a respiratory system, gets our brain going, and then pure defense. 
So. Do you know, I interviewed Dr. Austin Perlmutter and uh, he, his, his dad is uh, David Perlmutter who wrote Grain Brain and, and they just wrote a book together called Brainwash. And he launched into this whole discussion about when you're out in nature, that there are certain aspects of nature that bring cortisol down. And one of those aspects is the smell of nature that just going out and smelling the forest will actually bring cortisol down. Now, if you've done that in a little bottle, right? you don't have to go find the woods. You could stay in your office and smell it. That's what I wanted because there's a lot of respiratory blends. I was like, I don't want to smell a medicine cabinet. I want to smell the forest. Yeah. And so I wanted, I was like, I'm not always out. So that's why I put, I love conifers. Conifers are really good at pulling mucus out of the lungs and grounding us and just... Know, helping us be okay. Amazing. That's I'm why. Amazing. Okay. okay. Now a non-oil question for Perfect. you. We we are creating. Don't a ask book. me who my favorite child is. I'm not doing that. <laughs> That's, we won't talk about your kids anymore. <laughs> uh, if we're creating a book list of all of our guests, so it, is there a book that you were like that changed my life, or everybody needs to read this book? Something that really impacted you in a positive way. This is probably not the answer you're looking for, but I'm going to tell you why. So I'm going to say spiritual texts, scriptural texts are that for me. And here's the reason right. why. Because when I feel peace, I feel clarity. When I have yeah. clarity, I'm more inspired. And when I'm inspired, I'm motivated. Yeah, it's really and true. So for me, that is scriptural texts in general. So I apologize. I'm not answering your questions. Maybe no, no, in the no. Way you want, but it's that's your, where it's I your... go. It's your answer. So every, everybody gets to gets to say their own answer. So, sure. and believe it or not, I haven't had anybody say that yet. Um, we've had some fiction, we've had some nonfiction, but our mm -hmm. goal at the end of this season is to put a book list together. So we'll, we'll add it to the list. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm back to an oil question. Okay. So you're the president of a hospital and you want to integrate oils into everybody's treatment plan. How do you see going about that? Is it symptom related? Is it condition related? Is that even possible? So if we think about the top 10 highest uh, or death, not death rates, but what causes death, if you look at the majority of those in some way, stress is related. So mm. I would use, think about mm. a heart disease, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously there's a nutritional piece, but it's also a stress piece. Mm. And so there's, there's two camps I'm thinking about. If you're wanting to purify the air and allow that to happen, look at some citrus oils or some thyme, right? Mm. Um, if I'm looking at lowering stress levels, I would do a combination of some citrus oils with some florals right? Like a and just, lavender and, and diffuse and it in the air them into the air, right? Brilliant. And there have been studies that have been done in reference to that in ERs and that thing. And they've done studies where it's just dropped stress like crazy. So citrus is great That's with delimining. So just oh. simple. Yeah, we do it in our clinic. We always have oils diffusing all the time. So, and it's really interesting when you walk in, there's like, I always joke because my team puts it on, it puts it out and I sure. walk in and some days I'm like, whoa, Oh my God, what are we, what are we smelling? And other days I'm like, I hate that smell. Can you make it go away like now? So Who smells it today, right? Right. Exactly. Who was that? <laughs> lemongrass. Lemongrass is a smell I do not like. Okay. Lemon what does that say is, about me? That says that you don't like lemongrass. So <laughs> lemongrass, <laughs> lemongrass, I will say is like I had somebody come over in the community to our home. They're like, I need two bottles of lemongrass. I'm gonna give it to this person. Lemongrass is a phenomenal cleanser. If someone is stopped up mm -hmm. or a little on that topical air on the abdomen, but at the same time, beware if you have, if someone experiences fibromyalgia, because lemongrass lights up the nerves in the entire body mm -hmm. because it, it increases communication. But Maybe it overstimulates me. It then. does. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. So what happens is these, these nerves in fibromyalgia are really struggling. And when you give them this shot, it's like, whoa. And so be, that's the only caution I have with lemongrass. Other than that, uh, what a fantastic oil, wonderful. And for those that don't like the smell, 
move on to another, right? Right. Yeah. Well, I just come back into my room and now, I, <laughs> now I'm going to have pure embrace going in here. I like so it. I've, I like that's it. what I've learned from this. So <laughs> you're good. Yeah. Okay. What is one health habit that you do every day that you would never give up? It is your ground outside of oils. I mean, you, I guess you could say oils, but something else that you do that really grounds you. Uh, taking time to breathe. Do you Literally know, ju- do you know that's uh, everybody answers that that's like, like 70% of my guests say that. So, so tell us what that means for you. The fastest way to change your state is breathing. And awesome. the one next to it is essential oil. So I know you said not with essential oils <laughs> and I'm sorry. It's okay. To I know that's today. the topic of the podcast. But, but even, no, but even if I, I won't use oils on some days, um, but think about it. Breath is life. Mm-hmm. And when we take the time to allow life into us, and I will, sometimes I will, depending on what's happening for the day, I will envision words, right? In with love, out with fear, mm. in with hope, out with fear. And so I will make it personal to me in reference to the words, because the words have as much energy as mm. an oil does. And so as we're wise in the words that we use and what we allow into us, to me, that's helpful. So. Amazing. Amazing. I've learned so much. Okay. Wonderful. My, my last question, if you had one message for the world that you could get into everybody's brain and their hearts, what would, what would that message be? Your value is not determined on what you accomplish in a day. It was determined long before you, you just, you are enough. And especially because I have a household of girls, I just, you are enough the mm-hmm. way you are mm-hmm. and just be love that. I love that. Well, Thank Gavin, our, our mutual friends told me I had to talk to you and now I understand why. So, <laughs> You're wonderful. Thank yeah. you for allowing me to be here. Oh, thank you for being here. And we are just such fans of amazing products that are backed by amazing people trying to do amazing things in the world. So thank you. Thank you for all of that you're doing. And I'm going to report back after I go lather a bunch of these on me. I'll let you know how it all worked out. So you bet. Appreciate hey, my friend. you. Keep smiling. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.